Hey guys, welcome to Learn Today RGCSE. This is a tutorial video for Chemistry, Paper 4 Theory, Variant 4-3 for May-June 2023 examinations. Question 1. Some symbol equations and word equations A to J are shown. Use the equations to answer the questions that follow. Each equation may be used once, more than once, or not at all. Okay, let's first identify the reactions from A to G. Equation A. During a neutralization reaction, base is added into acid to produce a neutral solution and this is the ionic equation for neutralization. Equation B. This is an ionic equation from metal cation reacting with hydroxide anion forming a metal hydroxide precipitate. This reaction is known as precipitation. Equation C. An alkane reacting with chlorine is a substitution process. This reaction happens with the presence of UV light. Equation D. This is an addition reaction when bromine is added into alkene to test for an unsaturated compound. Equation E. This is the breaking down of long alkene chain into smaller chain of alkenes and alkene. This is a cracking process. Equation F. We have here a more reactive halogen displacing a less reactive halide. This is called displacement. Equation G. We have alkene burning in the presence of oxygen. This is combustion. However, since carbon monoxide is formed instead of carbon dioxide, this would be incomplete combustion. Equation H. We have a carboxylic acid reacting with alcohol to form ester and water. This process is referred to esterification. Equation I. Hydrogen and oxygen combines together to form water through electrolysis. Equation J. This one should be easy. Carbon dioxide and water converting into glucose and oxygen. This is known as photosynthesis. For the next step, you can just fill in the letter A to J for each of the reaction. Question 2. The symbols of the elements in period 3 of the periodic table are shown. Use the symbols of the elements in period 3 to answer the questions that follow. Each symbol may be used once, more than once or not at all. Give the symbol of the element that part 1 is present in purified bauxite. Aluminium is extracted from its ore called aluminium oxide. So the element present in purified bauxite would be aluminium. Part 2 contains atoms with a full outer shell of electrons. This means that the atom has 8 electrons on its outer shell and that would be the element present in group 8 which is argon. Part 3 is used to kill microbes in water treatment. That would be chlorine. Part 4 forms an amphoteric oxide. Amphoteric elements are able to react both as a base and acid. Some of the elements which forms amphoteric oxide are aluminium and zinc. So the answer here would be aluminium. Part 5 forms an oxide which causes acid rain. Acid rain forms when oxides of nitrogen or sulfur dioxide in air mixes with rain. So the answer here would be sulfur. And lastly, it has an oxidation number of negative 1 when it forms a compound with hydrogen, meaning that this element has accepted one electron to achieve its octet state. So this would be chlorine. Question B. The relative atomic masses of elements can be calculated from the relative masses of isotopes and their percentage abundances. Part 1. Identify the isotope to which all relative masses are compared. This is a pretty standard answer. The isotope used is carbon-12. Part 2. Table 2.1 shows the relative masses and the percentage abundances of the two isotopes and a sample of magnesium. The total percentage abundance here is 100%. Calculate the relative atomic mass of magnesium to one decimal place. Relative atomic mass calculations are very methodical. We are going to multiply each mass by its percentage and then dividing it by 100. This will give you one mark. The question asks your answer to be in one decimal place. So the calculation here would give you 24.3. And this will give you your second mark. Relative atomic masses have no units so you can just leave your answer as 24.3. Question C. An ion contains 10 electrons, 13 protons, and 14 neutrons. 
Part 1. State the nuclear number of the ion. When showing the nuclide notation of an element, we will show the proton number at the bottom and its nuclear number at the top, which is the total number of protons and neutrons, which in this case is 13 added up with 14. So your nuclear number of the ion is 27. Part 2. Identify the element that forms this ion. In order to identify this element, we have to look at its proton number. The proton number given was 13. Therefore, the element that we are looking for is aluminium. Question 3. Magnesium form ionic compounds. Ionic compounds are formed when a metal element reacts with a non-metal element. Question A. Magnesium reacts with fluorine to form the ionic compound magnesium fluoride. The electronic configurations of an atom of magnesium and an atom of fluorine are shown in figure 3.1. Part 1. Ions are formed by the transfer of electrons from magnesium atoms to fluorine atoms. Complete the dot and cross diagram in figure 3.2 to show the electronic configurations of one magnesium ion and one fluoride ion. Show the charges on the ions. To obtain a stable full outer shell of electrons, the magnesium atom would lose one electron to form magnesium ion. Therefore, it will form a charge of positive 1, whereas the fluorine atom would accept one electron from magnesium, forming a fluoride ion with charge negative 1. Part 2. Deduce the formula of magnesium fluoride. To find the formula of a compound, we will just cross the oxidation number to the opposite side of each element. And this leaves us with Mg1F1. Part 3. When solid magnesium fluoride is dissolved in water, it forms a solution that conducts electricity. State one other change that can be made to solid magnesium fluoride to allow it to conduct electricity. In solid state, ions are held together by strong electrostatic force, so there are no free-moving electrons. And this does not conduct electricity. So the changes that we can make to the solid magnesium fluoride is to change it into liquid, and this can be done by melting. Question B. Silicon tetrachloride and silicon oxide are covalent compounds. Complete the dot and cross diagram in figure 3.3 to show the electronic configuration in a molecule of silicon tetrachloride. Show outer shells electrons only. Before drawing, let's identify the elements that present, silicon and chlorine. Next, let's write down their electron configuration. From here, we can see that silicon needs another 4 electrons to be stable, whereas chlorine needs one more electron to be stable. Okay, now let's fill in their outer shell of electrons. As silicons have 4 electrons, we will place their electrons lying on the chlorine atom to show that they are sharing with chlorine. And now we will continue drawing the electrons on chlorine atom, which consists of 7 electrons by its own. When filling in the electrons for chlorine, we should make sure that one of each electron falls into the shell of silicon. And as you can see here, 4 electrons are shared from chlorine to silicon since silicon needs 4 more electrons to be stable. Individually, each atom will have a complete 8 electrons on its outer shell. Question C. The melting points of silicon tetrachloride and silicon oxide are shown in Table 3.1. Part 1, silicon tetrachloride has a low melting point because it has weak forces of attraction between particles. Name the type of particles that are held together by these weak forces of attraction. The type of particles are known as molecules. Part 2, explain in terms of structure and bonding why silicon oxide has a high melting point. When explaining in terms of structure and bonding, you can start by stating the type of compound it has. Silicon oxide is a giant covalent structure. Next, mention the type of bonds of forces a giant covalent structure has. Hence, it requires a high energy to break the bond between the particles. Since you are only given with 2 marks, the first 2 points are sufficient. You can mention the third point if you are given with 3 marks. Question 4. Hydrogen is produced by the reaction between zinc and dilute sulfuric acid. Question A. A student carries out an experiment using excess zinc and dilute sulfuric acid. The student measures the volume of hydrogen produced at regular time intervals using the apparatus shown in figure 4.1. Lumps of zinc are used. The rate of reaction decreases as the reaction progresses. 
the rate eventually becomes zero. Part 1. Explain why the rate of reaction decreases as the reaction progresses. In the beginning of the reaction, the concentration of sulfuric acid is the highest. Therefore, the collision frequency is at the greatest, resulting in the highest rate of reaction. As it is being used up, the concentration decreases, leading to the collision frequency becoming lower. Hence, the rate of reaction decreases. Since you're only given with one mark, you can just talk about the concentration or the rate of collision. Part 2 explain why the rate of reaction eventually becomes zero. This reaction will completely become zero when all the sulfuric acid is completely used up. Question B. The experiment is repeated using powdered zinc instead of lumps of zinc. All other conditions remain the same. Explain, in terms of collision theory, why the rate of reaction increases if powdered zinc is used. Firstly, state what effect does using powdered zinc instead of lumps, half on the rate of reaction. Powdered zinc has larger surface area compared to lump zinc, giving you the first mark. So this means that the frequency of collisions between zinc and sulfuric acid increases. This will give you your second mark. Next, question C. The equation for the reaction is shown. 25 cm cube of 2 mole dm cube sulfuric acid is added to excess zinc. Calculate the volume of hydrogen formed at room temperature and pressure. The volume of 1 mole of any gas is 24 dm cube at RTP. Use the following steps. The first step is to calculate the number of moles of sulfuric acid used. Let's first identify the values given for sulfuric acid. You have been given the volume and the concentration. There are only two formulas related to calculating moles. Since we are given the volume and concentration, the formula that we are going to apply is this. The concentration given is 2 mole per dm cube and the volume given is 25 cm cube. But you have to convert this into dm cube by dividing 1000, giving you 0.025 dm cube. After calculating the mole, you will get a value of 0.05 mole. Step 2. Deduce the number of moles of hydrogen produced. Using the balance symbol equation, we can see that 1 mole of sulfuric acid will react with 1 mole of hydrogen gas. From step 1, we have obtained the number of mole for sulfuric acid which is 0.05. Using the ratio of 1 to 1, you will also get the number of moles of hydrogen produced which is 0.05. Step 3. Calculate the volume of hydrogen formed at room temperature. To convert mole into volume, you have to multiply with 24 dm cube. So the formula to calculate volume would be mole times 24 dm cube. The mole of hydrogen is 0.05 multiplied by 24 dm cube will give you the value of 1.2 dm cube. Question D. Hydrogen can also be produced by the reaction of zinc with dilute hydrochloric acid. Part 1. Write a simple equation for this reaction. This should be simple. You have got zinc reacting with dilute hydrochloric acid, which is HCl, produces zinc chloride and hydrogen gas. This will give you one mark. Whenever you are writing an equation, always check to see whether or not your equation is balanced. You have here two chlorine, so we're going to place two here to balance out your chlorine, causing your hydrogen to become two, and you have two hydrogen here as well. So this equation is now balanced. Part 2. State the test for hydrogen gas. These are some of the example tests that you should know the test and the results. To test for hydrogen, you will use a burning spleen which will result a squeaky pop. 